Hey guys, um, here working on 1978 Toyota Hilux pickup. Uh, this is the uh, 22R swap. It originally came with the 20R. Uh, that motor got a little bit weak, and my buddy had this motor in a uh, four wheel drive mud truck down in his woods. <laughs> um, he didn't know much about it. He bought it like that, but he wasn't going to use that motor. He had a fuel injected motor with a turbo, you know, the 22R. T E or or whatever, uh, R E T whatever it is, but anyway, he was going to swap that motor over in it, so he didn't want this motor, and I got really lucky. Um, he got in that truck. I mean, we had to hack through the weeds with machetes. He got in that truck, pumped the gas the two times, and the thing fired right up. I said, "Yeah, I'll take it." So uh, I got it for a little bit of nothing. Good friend. Um, he was a little upset afterwards when he found out what it was. Um, uh, I can't remember the name of the people who I think built it. Um, you can look it up on the internet. They usually come yellow, the blocks, after they're done with them. Um, and that's how I got it. It was yellow, greasy, and not sure how many miles are on it or what have you. But this is a little two-part video. I just adjusted the valves. My exhaust valves um, come loose every so often. I've been running it hard, uh, over revved it a little bit one evening, and you get a little bit of break in and stuff, and um, you'll have to readjust them for a while at first. Um, originally, I was just slapping this motor in because the other motor was, you know, getting a little weak, making some noises, and I wanted to be able to use this as a daily driver and go anywhere in the United States. Um, so I looked for a fresh motor, which I found. And I did the 307 gear swap in the back so I can be on the interstate. But I really lucked out. Uh, this motor is freaking awesome. Um, extremely powerful. Um, it's not, you know, top of the line, five, stage five or any shit like that. But it's got a nice little cam in it. Um, it is the 22R head. It's not the 20R head. I still have that to do if I want. But, you know, I, it's got the Weber carb and uh, got a header on there. Um, but anyway, two-part video. So uh, just adjust the valves and, um, you know, check out the, the recommended manufacturer's procedure on that. But when you do these kind of valves, you know, they call them poly locks or whatever, where you have that little lock nut in the um, adjustment. What you're doing is that's actually the, the, um, the stem that's in here is the rocker tip. Okay, and what you're adjusting is the, the lash, the gap between the rocker tip, which you can't really see, it's under here, it's a hard steel, um, it's actually the other end of this piece there, um, is touching or has a slight gap with the valve stem tip. Your valve is down in your head, okay, down in there, where that thing's going. This is your valve spring, okay, to, and what the valve spring does is to keep the tension on that valve so it doesn't slap around and also it keeps it tight, um, real tight when it's not being depressed. Okay, so anyway, the inside of that spring is a stem coming up from the valve, which is down in your combustion chamber in the head. Okay, and this rocker tip is touching that. Well, you don't want it to touch it um, initially because what happens is this stuff expands and um, it'll get too tight and you would wear out your valve train or you'd break something. So what you have is a valve lash uh, adjustment, um, a gap adjustment, okay? And like I say, follow your manufacturer, recommend it, because everybody's got their own opinion on what that's supposed to be. I'm not even going to get into it. I like mine a little bit tight. Um, you don't want to have them super tight and then drive, you know, eight hours. Um, again, you'll just wear your stuff out, could possibly break something. You know, once again, the reason for the gap is for heat expansion. Um, they will get tight um, on their own, so you don't need to make them tight. Anyway, so that's what that's about. Okay, when, going back to what I was saying, what you're looking for, there is a sequence to do it, but basically what you're looking for is the rocker arm, okay, rides on the cam down in there. Sorry about the lighting. Um, you see the lobe circles, okay, there's a good one you can see, it's a little bit shiny, um, right there, okay, that's where the rocker arm is touching the cam, I love this autofocus, it's because I'm so damn shaky because I'm old, 
um, it's riding right on top of the cam and then when the lobe comes up it takes that and it rocks it that's why it's called a rocker so your hand it rocks it like that and then pushes this tip down on the valve which pushes your valve down in okay that's how it works so basically when you're adjusting them what you want is you want this on the part of the cam you want your rocker here on the part of the cam that is not the lobe. See, that's a lobe. It's raised, you know. A lobe is up, and then, you know, the bottom is down, like this one here. It's hard to tell. It's terrible video, but um, this is not on the lobe, so this one would be loose. Okay, I just adjusted them. It's not too loose. So you can follow a sequence, or you can just make sure that they are exactly at top dead center on that cylinder, which will be not on the lobe of the cam. Okay? So um, then that's when you want to adjust them. You hear this? Okay, so that's got a little bit of play in it that I just adjusted, and it's not on the lobe of the cam. And, uh, of course, my phone's not focusing. But anyway, you get it, okay? And if you could see under there, microscopically, it's uh, I'm not going to tell you the measurement because I set mine differently, and I don't want to get into getting you in any bad habits. Okay, um, that's one part. So yeah, I did that, and then I'm gonna clean the cover back up, polish it some more. You saw I had it polished in my other videos, and I'll shoot it when I'm done. Um, <clears throat> excuse me too for my breathing. I've been having an allergic reaction to something lately. My throat's like a little swollen, <laughs> a little restricted here, so um, some weird stuff's going on lately. But anyway, um, the other part is, um, okay, so, if you did this properly, you know, like I say, read your stuff, and it'll tell you how to do it. If you look down in there, see the harmonic balancer, the pulley down in there, there's a little red mark I put on it, and you can see some numbers down in there. Okay, and it's, uh, you see a zero. Next to that, you'll see an 85, but uh, you see that zero, and then to the left of the zero, you see a couple little marks. Okay, that's your initial static timing which is advanced a little bit and that's when you shine your light on it when this thing's running the red mark will be back there and you turn your distributor to adjust that but you know to do to have a proper top dead center your little mark is on zero and then your cam gear which your chain is on has a little dot in it or on it right there by my finger and that's supposed to be straight up and down Okay, so here we go. Um, if you notice, mine's not 100% straight up and down. It looks like it's about really one tooth off. Okay, um, but here, here we go. Here's where it gets really crazy. Okay, so then you come around here and it top dead center on number one. Okay, this don't mind this wiring. That's, uh, <laughs> that's some uh, crazy stuff I got going on there. But um, okay, so that is your rotor button this is your distributor this is your rotor button okay and that points inside of the cap and you see the little little prongs there when that comes around it throws a spark to that metal which throws a spark out to your wire okay now if you 22 if any most Toyotas okay um, the number one cylinder is supposed to be in this position right here okay it's gonna fire number one on your cap I mean on your cap number one is supposed to be right here on your cap okay if you notice mine's not okay so when everything's top dead center straight up mine's actually pointing on number two well when I first put this motor in here and I set it up the way it's supposed to be obviously it wouldn't start it was extremely advanced and uh, I could tell that by the way it was trying to start um, if you see that little rag on my dipstick and all the oil everywhere. The other day my dipstick blew out and uh, coated everything with oil and that's what that in the other video I talk about. See that little spot on there? Um, it's real real loose in there. It's old so I put a little piece of rag around it which is not a great idea and then shoved it down in there for right now until I can get a new one. Okay back to this. Um, try to keep up with me because I jump around like crazy. It's just my brain. Um, anyway so Basically what this is, is um, this is retarded timing, okay? Um, when I tried to get it started, when I first put it there, I had number one here. And what, that, what I mean by that is the, this rotor button 
should be over here, okay? And that would be number one, if I put this cap back on. This wire should go to number one cylinder, okay? Well, it doesn't, okay? It did when I first set it up the way it was supposed to, but it wouldn't start. It was acting like it was really advanced, which it was. That would mean that it's trying to fire here when it should be firing over here, okay? Um, now you see that it's pointing to number one, okay? And this, what I mean by that is this wire goes to number one cylinder. So when everything's on top dead center, it fires right here because that's where the rotor button is and pal number one fires. Okay, that's correct. It's just in an incorrect position. So I knew that immediately by the way it was going. You can tell that like hot rods, um, you'll hear them do that and then they'll, they'll fire up. Okay, in the old days we'd leave our distributors loose on our Chevys and when we we're gonna start it, we'd jump out and we would turn this distributor back a little and uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> retard it a little bit this way and start it and then jump back in and advance it. Um, so we got ma maximum performance. And um, you can read up a little bit on that. I'll explain a little bit later. So what I got here is um, this engine built by some professional guys um, is what we're thinking. Okay, either either somebody screwed up and, and just got something wrong um, or what I believe is this motor was built to be uh, forced induction of some sort. Okay, and what you can do sometimes, you can take a stock motor and retard the timing, the cam timing um, and ignition timing to boost it or supercharge it or some nitrous or whatever. Not really nitrous, that doesn't make sense, but um, to boost it. It's just another way. So I think it was built to be, you know, boosted in some form or fashion. And basically, it's, it, was, it would be retarded. Um, right now, it's actually not. What I've done is I've changed my um, wires around and so forth. So it kind of makes a little bit of sense. If anybody has any input on that or it knows exactly what's going on here, I can't remember these guys' names that build these motors. I'll, um, I'll find it and put it in another video. But uh, if anybody has any input on that, anything different, uh, I'm sure we can debate about it all day long. But... Um, you know, I picked right up on it. I knew what I had to do, and the thing runs awesome. Uh, as you know, I keep talking about it's it's badass. This little motor, I cannot believe the power that it puts out. It starts on about a quarter of a turn. I mean, as soon as you hit the key, it's running. It, it sounds like I, you know, it's automatic, like a button. Pow! It fires just like that, uh, unless I pump the gas or something stupid by accident, or you know, it's usually me. Um, this thing kicks right off, automatic, automatically every time. So, I mean, the timing is, is freaking perfect. Um, if you want power down low, um, you retard your timing. And uh, you would loosen that up and turn your distributor um, in the direction of the rotation, which would retard it. And that will give you low-end torque and power. And then if you want uh, high-end power, you know, your optimal horsepower at high RPM, then you would turn it. The opposite direction of rotation which would have it firing earlier which would be advanced timing so right now i'm kind of in the middle so it just depends you know how you want to run um i'm using this as a daily driver right now running up and down the road with it so uh, i just keep it you know minimum so anyway my timing's right on everything fires up but apparently somebody's engineered it and degreed the cam for some kind of performance application because if you see again Right now, it's not exactly straight up and down. It might look like it to you, but it's not. It's off a little bit, and uh, the tension's out of the chain. And um, as you see, the rotor is actually off one cylinder, completely one. And um, so that's what I got there. Anyway, um, probably doesn't make any sense to you. <laughs> I just thought I'd uh, run a little bit of information on that. I'm going to polish that valve cover up and uh, cam cover whatever you all want to call it and put that back on and uh, I'm just going to keep uh, this motor in here for right now use it as a daily driver I'm about to fix it up a little bit I keep flirting with the idea about the V8 um, I might just be happy with what I got engine wise and then focus my attention and money and everything on to getting the truck fixed up um, because you know I bought it with damage on the front. I found most of the parts. I don't have them yet, but the two fenders, uh, the grill, 
the little valence down there, all that stuff. I can get it for a couple hundred bucks. Um, some's used, some's new, and the hood's got a little dent in it. But I'd rather get this front fixed back up and uh, get Bessie fixed up here. I got a couple rust spots. Um, you all been following the other videos, but for those who haven't, a couple little rust spots. The other side, I got a couple holes there in the cab. There's some, some holes. It's a tiny bit of rust, but it's really good shape. A lot of dings. Um, but anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get her fixed up and get the body work done, get her painted up nice, and I might just add a little bit of power to this motor or something or just leave it, be happy with it for a change. Um, but anyway, so that's what's up with Bessie. Uh, appreciate you guys watching. Uh, I know this is a lot of scattered rambling, but I hope you get some kind of information that's helpful to you. And if not, you know, just follow along. I'm just updating what's going on here with her. And again, I had this daily driver. I threw this motor in in a day. Uh, I pulled it out. You know, my buddy and I pulled it out of that truck, and I came up here, cleaned it up, slapped it in real quick, and I had to be driving. You know, I think it took me, it was like a day and a half, actually. You know, I buttoned it up the second day. I got it in, and um, I had to switch the, it came out of a four-wheel drive. So I had to swap the uh, pickup tube and the oil pan off the other motor over. But um, I didn't do that at first. I forgot about it, and I started to set it down in there when I realized that um, the, the uh, tie rod um, that, that ties the steering there, uh, one side to the other was actually going to hit the pan, so I had to switch that around. But um, I mean, I knew it as soon as I saw it. I was like, "Crap!" <laughs> you know. Now I remember what what happened. So anyway, I got it in one day, and then the next day I just buttoned it all up and got it running, and uh, thing runs awesome. But I haven't even tuned it yet. I still got the old fil fuel filter on there, a stupid ass uh, air filter that's about half dirty. I haven't jetted the carb or anything yet. It runs sweet. Um, it's tearing the streets up uh, at 60 miles an hour. You punch it and you're at 100 real quick. Now um, it's just cool. It's it's a great little thing. So I'm just probably gonna put a little more time into that and go ahead and fix her up. I'm gonna do complete interior, complete custom paint. You know, get the grill all fixed up. Uh, I'm gonna give her the attention she deserves. So, all right, guys. Uh, a lot of quick rambling. I got to get to work. I only got a little bit of time today. And uh, thanks for watching.